Hi, this is Ada, Hospitalist MP with Med Lectures Express, back with a new video titled Approach with Dyspnea Plainly Explained. What is dyspnea? Dyspnea can be described as subjective awareness or sensation of breathing distress or respiratory dif difficulty, or you can call it shortness of breath or respiratory distress. Its pathophysiology is multidynamic and it involves a complex interplay between the central respiratory centers such as cerebral cortex, brainstem, and peripheral receptors. So the peripheral chemoreceptors in the aortic arch and carotid bodies detect changes in partial pressure of oxygen pH level and partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The mechanoreceptors in the airways and lungs detect changes in pressure, airflow, uh, ventilation, and uh, the central chemoreceptors in the medulla also detect changes in partial pressure of carbon dioxide, pH level. The stretch receptors in the pulmonary vasculature and uh, right ventricle detect changes in intravascular volume but you know in an emergency situation you're not really thinking about the patho but it's good to know about the patho like the general patho and then you also have to think of the underlying mechanism because it could be because of COPD, CHF, PE so those are important usually it's more important to know the underlying mechanism versus the general patho. What to do first? So your first initial steps would be to determine the cold status. We usually do this while we're on our way, like if there's a rapid or while you're in the elevator, you can look through your Haiku app and just kind of get a brief synopsis. Of the patient's history, uh, their current medical plan, you know, recent progress notes, stuff like that. So when you get to the patient's uh, room or to the floor, the first thing you want to know is the vitals. So are they hemodynamically stable? So if they're having tachycardia, fever, um, and they're desaturating, you know, the first thing you want to do is place them on supplemental O2, um, and then you go from there. So if they're tachycardic and they're having fever, that's gonna clue you into maybe doing uh, checking for PE, uh, but I don't wanna get too much into it because we're gonna discuss that further down the line. So you get your vitals. Um, you want Basically, you wanna know that they're hemodynamically, hemodynamically stable. Um, if they are desaturating, you place on supplemental too. You also want to know a brief history and admission information, which you've already reviewed prior to going to the patient. Um, past medical history, you should have already known that prior to um, engaging with the patient. Um, in outpatient basis, um, you would know this prior to seeing the patient. So, but this is more focused on inpatient management. So, and then you move on to your assessment. So with the assessment, whenever you see the patient, you always think ABC, airway, breathing, and circulation. The next thing is the upper airway. Is it clear? Is there strider? Um, is there a possibility that this patient is having an anaphylactic reaction? Or do they have angioedema, neuro? Uh, do they have altered uh, mentation? Are they comatose? Uh, cardiovascular, are they having chest pain? Um, you know, are they voicing that they're having palpitation? Stuff like that. Pulmonary, obviously, shortness of breath. Um, you also want to know, you want to assess for possibility of PE. The, you, so when you're doing all this, you're thinking about the most emergent differential diagnosis or the, the red flags, the red flag diagnosis, which first is ACS, then you have PE, then you have aortic dissection, uh, uh, tension pneumothorax, Boerhaave syndrome, things like that. So 
Um, other, other systems you want to check infectious, um, do they look like they're septic? Uh, if they're diabetic, the, um, are they in DKA? Um, also you want to check for, uh, features of anemia. Okay. What to order? So the first thing you want to do in a dysmic patient or a patient that has shortness of breath is to get an EDG. So what this, well, these things are done concurrently, like simultaneously, like the EKG normally, cause in the facility I work, it takes a little bit of time for the respiratory to come. So you're doing the EKG first and then the ABG, then the chest X-ray, then the labs and all that. So basically ABG, what do you want to know from the APG? Is a patient in hypoxic respiratory failure or hypercapnic respiratory failure? Are they having respiratory acidosis or are they in metabolic acidosis? So these are things that you can catch from the ABG. EKG, you are they having um, N-STEMI, STEMI, um, you know, ACS, PE, tachyarrhythmias, like supraventricular tachycardia, AFib, uh, stuff like that. Uh, portable chest x-ray, does it demonstrate pneumonia, pulmonary edema, pneumothorax, lobar collapse. If the chest x-ray is normal, um, you want to rule out PE. So you can either start with doing a D-dimer and you can do a D-dimer calculations on MD-calc. That, that will kind of clue you into whether you need to get a CTA chest, you know, to rule out uh, PE. For the most part, if they're having tachycardia and fever, you really want to go ahead and get that CTA. Okay. So CMP, MAG, these are just my order panel of what I do for somebody who's got this mirror. So CMP, MAG, and CBC. What are you looking for? Electrolyte disturbances, anemia, renal or hepatic impairment. Pearl BMP, if you suspect CHF exacerbation, Troponin, if concurrent chest pain. If they're not having chest pain and they don't they don't know they don't have a peripheral edema or you're not auscultating rails, there's no need to do the pro BMP or get a troponin. Okay. And um you would also get a lactate procal if concurrent fever. Another important intervention is if you your, um, your patient is hypotensive, you want to go ahead and do IV fluid resuscitation. How to treat. Here you're evaluating your laboratory and diagnostic uh, results for acute findings. For instance, if the ABG shows respiratory acidosis, you know, you want to you want to put them on NIPPV, such as BiPAP. If the CTA shows PE, um, of course, um, you want to know whether it's distal or proximal, but, you know, we'll get into that in another video. But the most important thing is to um, anticoagulate. Anti um, if hemodynamically unstable, they might need more, more advanced therapy like thrombolytics. Also, for all PEs and in, in, in my setting, we consult with PERT response team on appropriateness of therapy, and patient may need a bridge regimen for warfarin. Okay, continuation of how to treat. So if your diagnostic shows tension chest x-ray, tension pneumothorax, they need emergent decompression. And uh, this should be done by an experienced clinician and ultimately transfer to ICU. So in, uh, in hospital medicine, it should be done by someone who's experienced to do it. So um, that's that. Continuation of how to treat. So if your results show CHF exacerbation, you want a diary stump with Double their home dose of Lasix. Nitrates if hemodynamically stable and the BP 
is not soft but very stable so you, your bp at least has to be in the 120s 130s um asthma exacerbation you want to do serial nebulization with saba a uh, short acting beta agonist solumedrol uh racemic epi if uh there's presence of strider uh magnesium sulfate uh bipap and magnesium so this is for severe cases bipap you want to put them on a bipap if tri Potting needs urgent transfer to ICU uh, versus intubation. Um, the reason I put that is because um, they are likely to tire out if they continue to tripod. So um, in my setting, after all these interventions or everything is kind of done simultaneously, they are being transferred to ICU for better management. Um, the next is COPD exacerbation, serial duonerb, BiPAP, um, steroids, and antibiotic. Usually, we put them on azithromycin and ceftriazone. So azithromycin for the atypicals and um, ceftriazone for the typicals. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate uh, your time. Um, bye.